Hello. This is an animation made by our amazing creator, Nilesh. We are here to talk about the scientific purple of the Renaissance. Today in particular, we will talk about the three famous astronomers. So if you'll get what I mean, I'm talking about Ptolemy, Copernicus, and the ever-great Kepler. If you take a look at our poster board, located on your left there is some information about our first astronomer Ptolemy. So, Ptolemy was one of the first astronomers. He lived in Alexandria, Egypt from 87 to 150. The year after death. The man was was a man of many jobs. He was an astronomer, mathematician and geographer. He extended and synthesized Hipparchus, another early astronomer's system of epicycles and he explained his geocentric theory of the solar system. Geocentric means solar system with geo or earth located in the center. Ptolemy needed proof to back up his theory so his system involved at least 80 epicycles to explain the motions of the sun, moon, and the five planets that were known in his time. He believed the sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn revolved around Earth. The system he created became known as the Ptolemaic system. The Ptolemaic explanation of the motions of the planets remained the accepted wisdom until the Polish scholar Copernicus proposed a heliocentric view in 1543. Also, it should be noted that Ptolemy's system is actually more accurate than Copernicus's. The heliocentric formulation does not improve on Ptolemy's until Kepler's laws are also added. Everything he thought was described in the book Mathematical Syntaxes, Ptolemy was very important in the history of geography and cartography. Ptolemy of course knew that the Earth is a sphere. Ptolemy's is the first known projection of the sphere onto a plane. But otherwise, it is doubtful that Ptolemy actually believed in the reality of his system. He may have thought of it only as a method of calculating positions. Oh my! It looks like we've been taking up some of your time. Of course you'll want to visit some other groups so we'll make the rest of the presentation quick. Now look straight above for a section about Copernicus on our posture board. Copernicus. 1473 to 1543. Ptolemaic system. Planets appear to reverse. Motions at times. Ptolemy explained motions. In terms of orbits, epicycles carried on a larger orbit, deferent. Epicycle deferent ratios were very close to modern values of planet slash Earth orbit ratios. System worked very well. Contrary to popular myths, Ptolemy's system was not overly cumbersome, and it accounted for subtleties like the uneven motion of the Sun. It is not Ptolemy's fault. He did such a good job that it took 1500 years to improve on him. But soon, there were some emerging problems. System began to seem cumbersome and inelegant. System inaccurate. Alphonse and tables out of date by 1500. Heliocentric idea. Copernicus replaced epicycles with orbital motion of Earth. Less accurate than Ptolemaic system but conceptually simpler. Published as the Revolution of Asorbium Coelitium on the Revolutions of the Heavenly Spheres, 1542. Little immediate hostility. Earlier speculations on moving Earth had been decreed. Heretical, hence moving Earth idea could be lightly dismissed. One of most vigorous critics was Martin Luther. Finally, look to your right to see a section on Kepler, our last scientist. Kepler. 1572-1630, Br. 1546-1601. Kepler was a medieval mystic. One of the last of the scientific astrologers attempted to explain spacing of planet orbits by reference to platonic solids. Kepler was reluctant to 
a band and perfectly circular motion, but despite his mystic tendencies, he did when the evidence required it. Kepler found many numerological relationships among the planets, of which Kepler's laws are the three that have proven to have a physical basis. Kepler's concept of the sun as center of solar system may have had a mystical basis. Kepler and Galileo Galileo and Kepler corresponded. Galileo defended Copernican astronomy but never wrote about Kepler's model. Galileo may have been repelled by Kepler's mysticism. Moral, even the best aren't. Most innovative workers can sometimes fail to recognize a major advance. In conclusion, Ptolemy was one of the first and greatest astronomers and he thought the Earth was at the center of the universe. Copernicus first introduced the thought that it may have been the Sun at the center. Then Kepler was thought to have been the greatest astronomer because he found out that it only is the Earth at the center but the planets move in an elliptical motion. Oh Jesus! We really did take up a lot of your time. Make sure you call your friends to watch the animation. Hope you enjoyed our presentation and you will enjoy the many other presentations around you. Thank you.